Welcome to Sucraria Ocean Education, a Canadian nonprofit educating youth about Pacific Northwest aquatic ecosystems. Each video, we explore the amazing intertidal life of the Salish Sea. Join us as we try new activities, speak with experts in the field, and learn about what's in our ocean backyard on southern Vancouver Island. Enjoy today's video! On this episode of Animal Guide, we begin our two-part exploration of sea stars in the Salish Sea. Today we will learn about four species and highlight what they like to eat and what likes to eat them, where they like to live, and a unique fact about each of them. Sea stars are charismatic marine organisms that exist in many shapes, sizes, and colors. You may have heard people use the term starfish to describe sea stars. However, these creatures are not fish at all. They belong to phylum Echinodermata, along with sea urchins, sea cucumbers, and sand dollars. These are all invertebrates, meaning they do not have a backbone or any bones in their bodies. Fish, on the other hand, have a vertebral column or backbone and belong to phylum Chordata. Instead, echinoderms have calcareous ossicles, which make up their endoskeleton, or structure, and make them feel spiny, stiff, or coarse like sandpaper. The basic body plan of a sea star includes at least five arms, a central disc, a mouth located on the underside, and a madreporite on top of their bodies. The madreporite, seen clearly on this leather star, is important for the circulation of water through a sea star's body. Sea stars and other echinoderms have a water vascular system. Essentially, this means that they require seawater for locomotion, respiration, and transportation of food and waste through their bodies. Sea stars use the madreporite as a valve to control how much water enters their system. Now, let's take a closer look at some sea stars that live in the Salish Sea. First up, we have the beautiful bat star. Bat stars have shorter, more triangular arms than other sea stars and are distinctive because of their webbed foot appearance. Bat stars can grow from 10 to 20 centimeters in diameter and they can vary in color from red, orange, yellow, brown, green, purple, or black. They typically have five arms but can have up to nine. Their fuzzy appearance comes from the raised gill-like structures on their backs. Bat stars like to eat algae and detritus on the seafloor. They live in the rocky, low intertidal and subtidal zones, down to 300 meters deep. They can also be found along sandy bottoms and among surf grass. Predators of the bat star include other sea stars, mollusks, and crustaceans. A fun fact, when two bat stars bump into one another, they begin a gentle brawl of arm wrestling trying to get their arms on top of the other bat star. The voracious leather star can be identified by their mottled, leathery, slick-looking appearance. Moreover, they are smooth and slimy to the touch, unlike other sea stars who feel spiny. The leather star color palette includes gray with patches of red, bluish-gray, brown, and purple. They can also grow up to 30 centimeters. The leather star has a wide-ranging diet consisting of algae and invertebrates. Notably, the leather star likes to eat sea anemones, sea cucumbers, sea urchins, swimming scallops, sponges, bryozoans, and diatoms. Their known predators are seagulls and sea otters, so low tide is an especially risky time for this species. Usually you can find leather stars among rocky shore habitats in the low intertidal and shallow subtidal zones, down to depths of 302 meters. On land, they can be found on rocks, in tide pools, or on sand mud. A fun fact, leather stars are also known as garlic stars because they allegedly emit a strong garlic odor. Third, we have the blood star. No, the sea star does not suck blood out of its prey. It's just a vivid orange to brick red color. 
Sometimes they can appear as a paler yellow or a beige color too. And their central disc sometimes has gray patches like this one. Blood stars mainly eat sponges and biofilm. And they can also have a commensal scale worm that lives on their body. The scale worm does no harm to the sea star, just benefits from its protection. Predators of blood stars include birds and other more predatory sea stars. They can be found in the low intertidal and down to depths of 435 meters. Fun fact, a blood star's tube feet not only help them to hang onto rocks, they also enable them to smell what is around them. Imagine if you could smell through your feet. Lastly, we have the six-rayed star. This species can grow up to seven centimeters in diameter and has six rays instead of the common five. Six-rayed stars can appear as a few different colors, including mottled brown, red, green, and orange. These stars are carnivorous, meaning they eat other organisms like this purple volcano sponge. Their predators include sea and shorebirds, and sometimes otters. Six-rayed stars live in exposed locations in the intertidal zone, often under boulders or among seaweed, although they are not easy to spot. Fun fact, these sea stars are sometimes called brooding stars, because females will shelter their developing eggs under their bodies for up to three months. And during this time, they won't eat anything. Thank you for watching part one of Sea Stars of the Salish Sea region. Keep your eyes out for the second part of this video, where we introduce three more species of sea stars and talk about one of the major threats they face, sea star wasting syndrome. Thank you for watching today's video and thank you to all of our donors and supporters for making the work we do possible. If you would like to donate to Sequoia Ocean Education or wish to download free activities and lesson plans, please visit our website at sequoia.org. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss a single video. See you next time.